boys think I'm sixth grader at Kathy Middle School. I'm here today to be a voice for all students. And not being taught their voice are valuable. When we moved to my garden a year and a half ago, I was excited to start my new school. Come to my education, general education classroom. We first told story, story but we do not do that here. They weren't coming to say you're gay in class. Other students with disabilities. I no one be treated differently just because I have Down syndrome. Once I started school, the general education teacher she didn't pay me as a student. She was nervous about having me as a student because she was responsible for teaching the stroke test to the students in her class. Test scores really matter. My test scores isn't good enough to show a good reflection of teacher skills. So I left behind. This makes me feel like our school cares more about test scores. And then I care about me. Schools are putting too much attention on stuff. Test scores and leaving many students behind. All of us disabilities matter. In all students, I have Down syndrome, but that is not the I think I am. Proud to be me, I'm powerful, passionate, every, every year old young woman who have Down syndrome. I have big, big, big dreams. <laughs> I'm not capable to do things by myself. Many don't in, don't include me. Students with disabilities and have no, no expectation for us. If you're not included, do you feel loved? The Bible says, that's all you to be done in love because love never fails. Now I'm sixth grader at Kathy Middle School. My mom and my teachers have been working together to set me up and for success. Everyone, I, I must, everyone in my school is able to see how good I'm doing. Whatever my support is in place. I have lot of friends. I feel loved, valued, and included at Kathy Middle School. I want to speak up for all students with disabilities. Yeah, are still being segregated. We can put infinite on minds too. <coughs> we need to build up our children down because we are born to shine. <laughs> I am asking you, what would it take our school to be for high circle of support and inclusive education for all students? What would it take? to give away the self attend classroom. Allow our students to be included to get a general education classroom. What would it take to get funding and educate teachers? Thank you for your, for your time. Thank you for really believing me. when it comes to public comments. Today you were exceptional. You're, we're proud to have you as a student at Kathy Middle School. We wish all our kids were as graceful and as articulate as you were today. We're proud to be your school board, I promise you that. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your public comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't wait to see your big, big dreams come through and shine, okay? Thank you, Ms. Gordon. You want to follow that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got me crying. So. The floor is yours. I got this. Okay. My name is Rebecca Bordnick. I'm Addison's mom. 
I am also a student in the Texas Partners in Policymaking program. I am one of 30 that were chosen in the state of Texas to be trained in advocacy, inclusion, and productivity for individuals with intellectual disabilities. I am extremely passionate about inclusion and treating all students with the same dignity, respect, and love. I come before you today with a humble heart. I am grateful for our schools and the amazing teachers we have. I am not here to talk about our current problems, but rather with some recommendations that I feel are greatly, greatly needed in our school edu special education department. Since moving to the Valley, we have found a significant lack of knowledge when it comes to successfully implementing inclusion. We need to make, start making inclusion in a general education classroom the first option rather than the last option. Always encouraging placement for students with intellectual disabilities in the least restrictive environment. I understand that funding is a big concern. I have spoken to the co-founder of the Rio Grande Valley's Down Syndrome Association and they have offered to provide training and scholarships for training in areas that are needed for support. I also have a long line of parents that are willing to fundraise to help support our schools to get the fundraising, to get the support they need. I would like to propose the idea of bringing person-centered planning to the Valley. I feel it's the key ingredient for making inclusion work successfully, creating a circle of support around inclusive education. Person-centered planning is a process-oriented approach to empower people with intellectual disabilities. It focuses on the person, not the disability, and not the system. It unites the student, parent, teacher, and more together to form a circle of support around the student. When creative new directions and approaches are taken to support and fully engage the student, transformation occurs. This process thinks outside the box. How can we do this, rather than finding reasons why we can't? It focuses, focuses completely on the student, taking a closer look at what's important to the student. What are their dr dreams, passions, strengths, and abilities, and what's important for the student, and bringing them together to create a circle of support and a plan for success. This would happen prior to the beginning of the school year. This is so that the teacher, student, and paraprofessional could have time to connect and get prepared to tackle the upcoming school year together. This will not only help the student feel supported, it will also tremendously help support teachers that are nervous about taking on students with intellectual disabilities in their classrooms. The setting would be a comfortable environment where all people involved can work together, truly listening to each other and allowing all involved to make a heart connection rather than just a professional connection. Parents are a wealth of knowledge and can be extremely helpful when preparing a plan for their child. Nobody knows them better. Schools need to take the time to genuinely connect and listen to parents. Person-centered planning is not like an art meeting or even a pre-art. It is not where assessments are done ahead of time by titled professionals with recommendations. It's not in a setting that's uncomfortable and the person being discussed is not present or doesn't contribute. This is not a gathering to discuss program services and it's not <coughs> to discuss hours. This plan is to set up the student for success in all areas. Not many know about all the accommodations that are available to students. It's important to demonstrate different ways things can be done and modified to help them set them up for independence and success. This, holds, this helps us focus on what the student can do and helps us build on their abilities. Many don't realize that with a simple modification, it can make all the difference between the student being completely dependent on somebody for help or for them setting, being able to do things completely independently. We need to realize that challenging behavior is communication, not the disability. We need to incorporate the student's likes, passions, and use it to encourage good behavior. We need to establish clear, defined boundaries and daily expect expectations in visualization form. Albert Einstein said, everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it, it'll spend its whole life believing it's stupid. We need to look at all of our students as the wonderful, unique people that God created them to be and build them up to be the best that they can be. Thank you for your time.